The NHS has responded amazingly during the past couple of months, and they have done a fantastic job. We have seen a real acceleration in the adoption of innovation in the healthcare industry. Innovation, which we've been waiting to see for our whole lives, has been adopted in a matter of weeks, if not days. Well, I'm joined here by three tech experts in the healthcare industry who've got some great stories and insights to uh, share with us. Uh, Jamie Weissel, who's head of UK healthcare for Fujitsu. Kate Jeffries, client director for uh, Department of Health and Social Care for Microsoft. And uh, Dean Mitchell, NHS client director for ServiceNow. We're going to be discussing how the recent shift and pace of adopting innovation can be harnessed and sustained through the healthcare system. What steps the healthcare industry can take to continue the momentum and accelerate transformation going forwards. And we'll also be asking, what's the future for the healthcare industry? What are the future tech trends that those forward-thinking organisations can start to embrace now? So let's, let's pick up on the fact, as we all know, that the healthcare industry has been hugely uh, disrupted this year. Amazing stories of innovation uh, in the NHS through the pandemic. What are the key breakthroughs, would you say, uh, that the NHS have taken on board uh, that we can really learn from going forward? Jamie, do you want to pick up on that to start with? Yeah, I think for me, um, it's not so much about a, a technology innovation, it's more the approach and the um, cultural change that's, that's gone through, that's been uh, brought about by the pandemic. Pandemic. The, the, the speed, the pace, the uh, cutting through the red tape, the, the momentum that they've been able to build and, and the trust that's been built across the whole healthcare system, bringing together what can be a, a siloed organisation or group of organisations um, and making real change happen um, in, a, you know, in, in a crisis. Um, but you know, how do we... Um, build on that and keep that momentum going, I think is going to be a key thing for the next few months. Right, so you've seen that. Kate, Kate I mean, patient experience has been important in all this and the, yeah, the I mean, inevitable to, disruption. Absolutely. To Jamie's point about, you know, having to change things and, and move really quickly, it's gone from just a can-do attitude to a must-do attitude, I think. And, and what we've really witnessed, I guess, collectively as a tech industry is the ability to, you know, get together with the technology that we've got in a way that helps promote better patient experience you know when gps shut their doors um, how are you going to get the care you needed how are you going to get the appointments that you needed so using collaborative and production um, platforms that really promoted um, productivity was critical and of course we've seen microsoft teams promoting i mean that's how a lot of collaboration has happened yeah and to your point earlier you know about there's been such a massive massive change I mean, our team within Microsoft stood at 1.2 million users on the central NHS platform in four days, which had you said that to me six months ago, I'd have, uh, you know, questioned that as, yes. as being a reality. I still think Dean doesn't actually quite believe that. But speed <laughs> and, and you know, how fast this innovation is coming yeah. to be vital. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they always say that necessity is a mother, mother of invention. invention. Yeah. And we've never seen that more clearly demonstrated across the NHS. So. You look at NHS Scotland, for instance, they were given the challenge by the Scottish Government to stand up the National Test and Trace Service for COVID-19, and they did it within four weeks. Now, before COVID, that would have taken probably six, nine, 12 months to do. And we've also seen NHS England stand up uh, national services for PPE procurement, for emergency preparedness, resilience and response in four days, four working days. And that involves a lot of rolling out, I mean, take Scotland, yeah. that had to go presumably to all the health boards Did, yeah. and everything. Yeah. So they rolled it out to two health boards within four weeks and then the remaining 14 health boards uh, within, within four weeks. And then they were also thrown a challenge to integrate the new uh, Protect Scotland app into the platform. And they did that within three working days of being asked to do it. I mean, all things that would never have happened previously. But they did. So health organisations have been, they've been forced to transform. Yeah. Uh, tech has been very much at the, uh, the centre of that. What can the NHS do now to harness that momentum and take transformation um, forward. Jamie again perhaps to start with? Yeah so I think um, what the uh, learnings of the last few months have, have, have given and exposed is that um, technology exists out there, it's ready for adoption, it's ready for use and can be rolled out quickly. I think where the healthcare system has, has maybe struggled is on the underlying foundations uh, that exist within the, the, the system. You know, how do you make uh, the, the technology uh, adoption um, 
when you've got maybe a, a, a legacy infrastructure that makes, you know, you put the new technology on top of it, but it just doesn't quite work and you don't get that adoption. And I think some of the, the rollouts of, of particular technologies before the pandemic, um, you know, you could see that they couldn't be taken on because of uh, legacy you know, uh, foundations. And I think the pandemic has forced people to fix some of that underlying wiring. So the thinking has got to be sort of flipped on its head completely then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it's not about the innovation and the technology that you put on the top that is the, you know, the experience for the patient or the citizen. It's, it's actually putting that on top, but then making sure that it, it connects with everything in the background so that you're not creating more work or duplication of, of effort. Kate, it sounds like this, this would take an awfully long time. And of course, time wasn't available. Time wasn't available. I think picking up on Jamie and Dean's point about um, having to move really quickly and collaborate well with members across you know, the public sector. You know, if we think about the Nightingale Hospital setups, that was a collaboration between you know, defence, uh, voluntary workforce, nurses, doctors, STPs, CSUs, CSGs, all of the NHS ecosystem coming together. So I think we have to learn from that, apply that, you know, um, approach and kind of mindset to solving some of those underarching um, technological challenges that we've got around interoperability, mostly and data. So in, in some cases, was it a case of reinventing the wheel? Or is that not what you need to do? You need to evolve or what? I think you have to take what you've got available to you currently and make it work in a, in a fast way, you know, leveraging cloud technologies and cloud solutions instead of trying to figure out how to revamp your on-site data center, for example, key fast wins. Uh, we, we've talked uh, um, and we talked about the patient experience and of course in the NHS, that is what it's all about and making uh, that go well. Um, you know, the clinicians, the nurses, uh, staff, the people that deliver a good healthcare environment and so on and, and, and enable that smooth flow. How can we enable staff to be, uh, Dean, how can we enable staff to be more productive yeah. and therefore better for the patients in the long yeah, run? Yeah. I, think, I think obviously the focus always has to be on the patients and, and, and that's, that's correct, but without the clinicians, the nurses, the doctors, and even the administrators within a hospital being able to work effectively and efficiently, patients don't get the best experience. So I think what we're seeing is a, is a momentum shift uh, for uh, uh, NHS entities starting to focus now on their staff and whereas you've typically seen uh, processes, workflows, those kind of things all being done manually on things like spreadsheets, what we're actually seeing now is people starting to leverage platforms of technology that's already there to start to automate that work to provide a better experience for the, for the, for the clinicians to provide a better experience for their mm. patients. So interestingly you're saying that technology is not about technology per se, it's about enabling? It's the about stuff. the adoption, it's about recognising that effectively any process within a hospital is essentially a workflow um, and, and any workflow can be digitised, uh, the, you know, the, the technology has actually been there for some time but I think culturally maybe the NHS wasn't ready for it but I think again Covid has kind of accelerated that uh, need to innovate. And I suppose the idea is that this frees them, gives them more time, maybe yeah. they don't have to deal with some of the more laborious tasks because that's automated. Is yeah, that exactly. I mean, if you're a clinician and you're spending 10 minutes a day uh, for every procedure that you do to do some kind of administrative task, um, but that can be automated or digitised, you know, if you're saving two or three hours a day as a clinician, that time could be better spent on working with patients rather than working yeah. with, uh, with internal the, processes. I Kate, think the yeah. last thing we want to do as, a, as an industry is cause our hard-working clinicians to spend even more time and add yeah. complexity to their work, right? So everything that we do um, as an ecosystem is all about how can this help that GP, that doctor, that ward sister achieve his or her task quicker with confidence and, and in a safe way. So these are great aspirations. H has this actually happened? Have you yeah. seen it working? For real? I have, yes. So you look at NHS blood and transplants, um, you know, they went very, very quickly from uh, employees within their organisation not knowing where to go to request basic information, to ask basic questions, uh, now being able to have all of that kind of work automated. So again, you know, there's, they're, they're not getting frustrated, not knowing where to look, or t it spends, takes days to get basic questions answered. The other thing that we've seen, though, throughout this whole process is tech companies coming together to, to work together. So we saw fairly recently at Microsoft Ignite, ServiceNow and Microsoft coming together to talk about how we'd worked um, and developed an ability to integrate Teams with ServiceNow to make, again, 
uh, that whole kind of process of uh, operating the technology more effective and more efficient. So tech companies coming together, you talked about yeah. NHS blood and transplants where it has worked, but what about things like, you know, your ordinary hospitals which have to onboard patients, they've got to yep. sort them, you know, the, the work involved in that. Have, yeah, have yeah. we seen any changes there yet? Yeah, so we, we, we saw that with uh, Buckinghamshire Healthcare Trust where they had an issue where they were dealing with up to 5,000 uh, basic employee queries every month. Um, that were being done manually using old technology or spreadsheets and taking lots and lots of time to get basic answers to basic questions. And what we've been able to do effectively is automate a lot of that workflow involved in doing it, which means that now these clinicians can almost get instantaneous answers to those basic questions that were previously taking days or weeks to get responses to. I'm wondering to what extent we, you, you do or we can pull ideas from elsewhere in the world. Uh, to help the NHS with its transformation, yeah. to help any uh, service. Jamie, is that something we do? Yeah, so I think, um, yeah, it's one of the things I'm, I'm very keen to do uh, here at Fujitsu. You know, as a, as a global organisation, we've got very mature healthcare offerings in, in other geographies. Um, so I was talking to some of my Australian colleagues the other day around uh, technology that's being used to help identify brain aneurysms um, and using artificial intelligence to allow clinicians better, t uh, you know, the decision support tools that help them track the progress of an aneurysm so they can make an intervention before you know the the aneurysm ruptures um, and and you know can cause life-changing um, conditions for the patients you know th there's, there's lots of technology that play um, in other geographies in other areas of the of the world and equally in other sectors that we can look to bring into the healthcare market in and the I, I guess your knowledge across those areas is hugely useful because you're plugged in all around the world yeah and picking that stuff up is this something you, you, you both see as well, Kate? Yeah, it's been, do you know, it's been really exciting in a weird way over the last six months, kind of going through this process and working for an organisation like Microsoft that's got a global healthcare practice. Um, you know, some of the fantastic things that we're seeing in Brazil, for example, with neurological, you know, baby scanning using Azure AI, um, predictive analysis, some of the stuff that we're seeing, um, you know, in the US with uh, mental health care charities as well to drive collaboration and productivity and, and getting conversations going with people who otherwise would not have had a digital connection. Um, and then actually in the UK, I mean, you know, we're not a poor cousin in, in lots of ways. We've got some great innovation going on the, in the UK. UK and Business Services Authority, you know, they process 30 million paper prescriptions every month on behalf of the NHS and pharmacies. So we've been able to, you know, solve for that using kind of machine learning and, and cognitive AI as well. Yeah, there is a danger always in sort of seeing things, the grass is greener elsewhere, but actually it's here yeah. as well. And it is about sharing that yeah. all around. Is that, uh, Dean, are you seeing that yeah, as well? Yeah, so we're seeing um, uh, Australia, for instance, uh, we work with a partner in Australia to develop uh, an alternative to the traditional bedside button, which is the button you press when you need help. Uh, well, that's all very well, but if you press a button, then the clinicians who are there to support you don't know whether you're having a heart attack or whether you just need a glass of water. Um, so we work collaboratively with another tech company to develop something called the Bedside Assist, which is a simple Amazon Alexa-based type device um, that replaces the bedside button. So now it, it, you, can, you can shout out the request that you want. Uh, it will pick up on any adverse noises, any sounds um, that don't sound right, so that when the clinician gets the, uh, the work order to go and attend to the particular patient, they know what they're going for, and they can either take the water or the defibrillator, depending on where, what the condition is. Yeah, sounds like the glass of water is going to get pushed down the, the priorities. But the important things will get pushed up. And is that genuinely coming to you know, the UK and other countries now yep. that you're seeing it? Yeah, because okay. it's, not, it's, it's not location dependent no. um, and, uh, and, and it's been proven now in, 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 in Australia uh, and as I say what we're starting to see again probably as a result of the Covid pandemic is the NHS actually started to look outside its own borders for examples of what good looks like um, and, uh, and I think that can only be a good thing. All right, let's just perhaps finish this bit by talking about um, the future where the NHS goes forward, how we, how it moves forward. I mean, the, 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 the strains on it, the productivity that's required out of the NHS at the moment, and you'll be seeing this, Kate, enormous. Absolutely. I mean, you know, not forgetting what we've gone through and what we've achieved, you know, as a collective United Kingdom health service, you know, so zoning in on productivity and collaboration is going to be key. We mustn't forget that. Um, I think also then, you know, looking at prevention is always better than a cure. So understanding the preventative aspects that technology can bring to population health management, for example, is going to be key. Do we have the digital skills we need to make this work? 
So, you know, the NHS is the third largest employer in the world, right? 1.5 odd million employees. And so the, I guess the digital literacy across that whole estate is hugely varied. So as, you know, tech vendors in this space, it's also our duty to, to you know, partner with our, our customers um, and help equip them, you know, with training enablement skills, with enterprise skills, and um, with digital literacy enablement as well. So they feel confident for themselves, you know, to move forward in this new, new digital world. I ultimately it's about a better patient experience that's got to be at the end of the day uh, Dean it's gonna happen yeah yeah I mean for me I think sometimes in the past the whole kind of concept of the uh, of the patient um, uh, experience and that whole kind of um, clinical pathway um, is, is over complicated at the end of the day it is a workflow um, and, and at the moment that workflow is done with bits of paper it's done with seven or eight different systems and platforms across seven or eight different departments and as a patient that can be massively frustrating especially when the technology that you use at home um, to do basic things like order things off of uh, Amazon for instance um, uh, is uh, it, you go into a hospital and you see a completely different world and I think uh, for me it's about improving those workflows that traverse a hospital to maximize the experience not just for the patients but also for the clinicians. Do you, do you think this is going to happen because I mean you know the government in the UK is having yeah. a pretty tough time money-wise budget-wise I know there's money they want to put into the yeah. NHS but where is this going to fit on the priorities? For me it's self-funding for me, if you can improve the efficiency and effectiveness of a clinician's uh, day job to be able to better serve patients, um, that pays for itself for me. Um, you know, to say the technology is there and where we've actually implemented that technology, we've seen significant return on investments in less than 12 months. Jamie, take us forward. Big picture. What yeah. are, how are we going to get there? So I think just to build on, on what Kate and Dean have said, actually, I think there's, there's two things at the, the heart of that. So the first one is data. You know, all, all of what we're talking about here is just around bringing data together, using it more effectively and, and allowing the NHS to, to mine that information that they've got that, that currently is unconnected and, and not being used to best, best effect. And then I think the second piece to that is, you know, to the digital skills piece. I was talking to a, 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 a CIO with a hospital trust the other day day and and we were talking about you know technology is difficult for clinicians and nurses to access and it's complicated you know they, they describe that they you know some of the um uh, people in the in the NHS, you know, they're not they're not techies. You know, their their technical limit is Facebook. And I challenged them back and went, well, technology shouldn't be more complicated than Facebook. You know, we as a tech industry have a responsibility to make sure that at the point that the you know the clinician, the nurse is accessing technology, that it is a simple to use interface. And all of the complicated stuff happens in the background. And that is your vision of the future: simple interface, AI in the background. And that's the way they ma ma maximise time with patients that, you know, then improve the patient experience and, and a better outcome for the, the whole of the NHS. What an inspiring look ahead. And of course, it's actually happening as well now. Jamie, Dean and Kate, thank you very much indeed. Um, if you want to know more, do get in touch, do check out more information. But from us, thank you for watching.